All right, guys, let's talk pops, all right? Not the pop cereal, not the pop tart, not pop, the pop that Tommy's dad, Stu, used to call Tommy's grandpa pops. Let's talk pop culture, baby. All right, now, uh, the new, why am I pan up? The new Spider-Man Far From Home trailer just dropped. Obviously, I am very excited for what everything has been happening with the MCU lately in regards to even Endgame. What a, what a beautiful movie that is. Let's, get, let's just... Let's take a moment, please. Okay, so I'm so stoked for what the, for what the future has in store, and this is the first movie that is after the end of a saga, the Infinity Saga. So I want to really jump in. I want to I want to see what Sony has up their sleeves. I'm very worried as to what Sony can do with the IP of Spider-Man, just based off the fact that you know the, the Venom was supposed to it was just supposed to be bad, dude. It is bad. It was supposed to tank, but they got money. Who went and gave Sony money to watch Venom? But then last year, we also got into the Spider-Verse and uh, round of applause because that was a beautiful movie. It made me cry. And uh, honestly, one of the best Spider-Man movies of all time. Um, but Spider-Man, Tom Holland's Spider-Man is in the MCU it looks like Sony's doing well. There's been talks of them taking Spider-Man back and just doing whatever they want to do with them. But I'm hoping. And this, I saw this trailer this morning when it dropped. I'm very excited. I want to do a breakdown. So, everywhere I go, I see this shot. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here. This is uh, I'm going old school right now. Uh, I have to do everything time codes because I just don't have I don't have equipment. Oh. Um, but anyways, 14 minute mark. This is Tom Holland's Peter Parker in the Iron Spider suit right off the bat. And the, the trailer opens up w just the way I wanted it to. The first trailer, it was very vague. We just, just more action. And we had no idea what it had, where it took place in regards to the timeline of the saga. And here we are, Tom Holland. This is time after Endgame. And this is him dealing with the results of, spoilers, Tony Stark dying. And... and I can already feel the emotion just from the very beginning of it. I'm so excited. Go, I see his face. Iron Man, mural. See the emotion in his face. Yeah, I miss him too. And this shot right here, dude, of of Peter Parker just crying to Happy is just like. So it it's so it's so good, and I love the fact that thank God that they are continuing this. I, I'm I'm glad that we're seeing the results. I'm glad that this isn't some in between, uh, in uh, not Infinity War, but in between like Civil War and Infinity War kind of thing. Like, I'm just glad we're continuing the story. I'm just so happy. I don't think Tony would have done what he did if he didn't know that you were gonna be here after he was gone. Very good. And here we are. We see him in action. The suit looking absolutely beautiful. You gonna be the next Iron Man now? Well, no, I don't have time. I'm too busy doing your job. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, I'm glad he's back. The wittiness is back. I'm going on vacation. So I'm gonna stop it right there at the 44 second mark. Um, my thing is he is so Spider Man is back in New York. He's doing Spider Man things, helping out NYPD. Uh, it looks like he was taking down some sort of robbery here. I don't know exactly where that can be playing in in regards to the the lore um, possibilities. I mean, it could be just some random uh, heist. The fact that there's a couple more uh, police officers involved makes it seem like it's a bigger case. In my opinion, I could be taking it way out of proportion. I would love to see the integration of just the smaller villains in play, uh, such as like Tombstone or, uh, I was about to say Penguin. Penguin's part of the Batman. What am I doing? What am I thinking? Where am I, dude? Why is my, why is my sheet so wrinkled? I, I think, you know, people like Tombstone or people like uh, Wilson Fisk, but like, I don't think we're gonna see him because of Netflix and all that kind of stuff. My, I just hope to see smaller villains. That's all I want to see. Heads up. Nick Original Nick suit. And then here he's back in the Iron Man suit. I don't really want to talk to Nick Answer Fury. Why? Because if you don't talk to him, then I have to talk. But I don't want to talk to him. And I, well, okay, so I'm going to stop it here again. My, what my hope is, is that I want to see... I, I, I love the fact that we're seeing a lot of back and forth with Happy and Peter Parker now. And what I'm hoping is that since Tony Stark is not out of the picture... Uh, spoilers, he's out of the picture. I really, really want to see 
their bond becomes something big. And we're gonna there's gonna be a point that there's gonna there's gonna be a line in this trailer that is like pushing for this this idea of Spider Man that I really, really wanna see, and we'll get there in a little bit. You sent Nick Fury to voicemail? I gotta go. You do not ghost Nick Fury. What up, dorks? What's up? We're just talking about the trip. I'm here in St. Marco Polo. So the the fact that I, I love the fact that they're leaving New York, it gives us it, it feels fresh. I mean, we've already had Spider Man one, two, and three with Tobey Maguire. We had the Amazing Spider Man one and two with Andrew Garfield. Let's just forget about those because I I don't want to think about them. I, I still have PTSD about them. Um, they're all set in New York, and then Homecoming was set in New York, and I'm glad that they're taking Spider Man. Out of New York, and let's put them somewhere else. Let's make it feel fresh. Let's make it feel. Let's make it fun. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying this whole thing a lot. And the fact that uh, he just got hit in the nuts is the funniest thing ever. Oh, I think MJ really likes me. That reminds me when I first fell in love. You're a very difficult person to contact, Spider Man. I. I. So the fact that. Uh, so Nick Fury and, and Peter Parker obviously know each other. My my whole hope is that I want I hope that like I hope that Nick Fury is like the voice in his head you know like they're they're in complete connection the entire time that'd be great but I mean we'll see where that goes in this entire thing uh, I love Ned a lot his character is so good I can't wait to see him back on the screen but I mean let's just keep going and oh one more thing now the fact that the it, there's there's this rumor that's been going around is. Nick Fury's daughter, MJ. I don't know how to feel about that rumor. It's an interesting one, but that'd be really, really cool. That'd be a cool twist in regards to the Spider-Man lore. Um, and we can see Nick Fury take the place of uh, of Gwen Stacy's dad role and have those roles reversed from the Amazing Spider-Man, Gwen Stacy's dad, and Gwen Stacy. And that'd be Nick Fury and MJ. That'd be cool to see that dynamic played between those two. I would love that. Uh, that'll be the way that they can work out Nick Fury and his death and the emotional thing and blah, 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 blah. That'd be really, really cool. That's my thoughts. I like the idea of MJ being Nick Fury's daughter. I don't think it's a cop-out. I think that's a really, really cool idea. This is Mr. Death. And this right here, man, is where we finally see my boy, Jake Jonah Hall, in the Mysterio costume. I can't even begin to tell you guys how excited I am that Mysterio is finally getting his... His debut on the big screen. Like, I remember playing Spider-Man back on the PS1 and Mysterio. Was Mysterio in it? Yes, he was in it. It was that level where you like you're you're on the tower and you put building up and you have to take out the little things that are on his his coat. And they're on his coat right here. And the fact that they got Jake Jonah Hall to play as Mysterio is the even coolest thing ever. But they're playing this 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 thing with him as if he's a good guy. And Nick Fury and uh, uh, Holt, what's her name? Holders? Holders? Schmolders? Anyways, it says if he's got them tricked because Mysterio is a bad guy. That's all we know. Um, if they went the route that he's a good guy and then he turns bad because of some reason, we'll see. But I mean, we'll, let's keep going. Love Jake Tron Home. That line is the biggest thing that that's the that's the biggest key phrase in this film. I don't under, like it's so quick that you can miss it. I missed it the first time. The fact that Spider-Man mentions a multiverse is and here and here's the thing that I love the most about the Spider-Man film so far is they feel so genuine in the fact that their enemies are I mean we're been on their second film, but the enemies from in this Spider-Man canon are derived from the acts of either the Avengers or the or the things that have happened in the MCU world. So Homecoming happened, and Vulture became a thing because of the events of the first Avengers film. Mysterio seems as if he is the outcome of the events that happened in Infinity War slash Endgame, and he's part of the different dimensions. And so now we're going to be playing with the fact that you know back in Endgame. Tilda Swinton's character talked about the fact that you take one stone out, creates a multiverse, and different things like that. I don't know exactly how that plays into this. 
and it can get tricky. And I hope that they really are careful with this script because everything with time travel, everything in regards to different dimensions and multiverses is really going to be playing with things like that. So again, I'm still excited. They need to be careful because this can go down with bad writing right off the bat, but it is opening up the possibility of different multiverses in regards to the Sony Spider-Man. I don't think they're going to be really touching much in regards to MCU, but with Sony Spider-Man. So is it possible that we can see different Spider-Man? Things like that. I don't know. We have a know. job to do. And you're coming with us. There's got to be someone else you can use. Now these, now these enemies that we, we're seeing so far, I, I've heard people talk about them as them being the elementals. I'm not very... Uh, I, I don't, I'm not very caught up in, in regards to elementals. But... There's, I would love for them to have the names of certain, I mean, there's this one guy that looks like he can be straight up Sandman. That'd be cool if these are three different enemies that we can be seeing in regards to just the Spider-Verse and they're just being brought up as enemies. But it appears as if Mysterio is trying to help fight them. But what would be cool is the fact that Mysterio on the comics is known as like the, as a puppet, ma puppet master, puppet master. Get it right, dude. Get it right. Puppet Master. And he tricks people. And so I will I I what I can see this from going is the fact that Mysterio is actually controlling these guys. He's controlling Sandman. He's controlling these two other dudes that we'll see. You know, this Hydro Hydro Man, I believe, has been something that has been brought up. And then the fire dude, don't I don't know exactly who that can be. Um I it would be cool if we could see him control these guys. And he's the one who's behind all this. I can see that's where it's going. More than likely, that is where it's going. What about Thor? Off world. Captain Marvel. Unavailable. And so that line in particular is the one that... Uh, okay, so the Avengers are not there. He mean he, he brings up two. In that conversation, he could bring up a lot more. Thor, off world, part of the Asgardians of the Galaxy. We're going to get that later. Captain Marvel, too busy. We heard that. And Endgame. Other planets don't have people like you. I get that. Who's on Earth at this moment? At this moment, you have Falcon, Winter Soldier... Hulk, Hawkeye, um, all of Wakanda people are back. You have uh, a Scarlet Witch. Man, who else is there, dude? Asgard is now on land, so I mean, you have Valkyrie as well. So we have to just play with the world. Just have to suspend our disbelief. They need Spider Man. Spider Man's the only call. Cool. I really, that's not going to bother me. I know for some people it's going to bother them, but for me, I really don't care. But I'm just a friendly neighborhood Spider Man. Bitch, please, you've been to space. I love that line so what much. Do you want, Peter? And here we go, Mysterio in action. Okay, so this moment right here is one that's uh, very important. One, a little back, Mysterio in action. I, I, it's just a dream come true. I love Mysterio. I'm glad we're finally able to see him on the big screen. I don't know how many times I have to say that. I'm just so stoked, dude. This part with Spider-Man and Mysterio talking back and forth. It, it's you can see that Spider-Man is becoming close to Mysterio and he wants, you know, he's finding comfort in just talking with him and he just wants to be in love with MJ, which is a a cool element to the film that, you know, we're we're getting the pure Spider-Man and we're getting pure Peter Parker. And I love that. And I know they can balance it well. I know they can. Uh, they did it well with Homecoming. I know they can do it again here. But the fact that he's relying so much and he's sharing his feelings with Mysterio in this shows that, man, the, the payoff in the end of this movie when Parker finds out that he's actually a bad guy is going to be so... It's going to be so well done because I, I can see that they're trying to build this relationship between them two. Girl who I really like and tell her how I feel. MJ, I am Spider-Man. No. Okay, I don't even know... What to think about this woman right here? Does she really know he's Spider-Man? Is she just saying it? I think she knows. And I feel like at this moment, if the theory is true that MJ is related to Nick Fury, this is when we know. At this moment is when we find out. Or she is just not related to Nick Fury and she is just really smart and she just gets it all. And I'm... Don't listen to my theories. Oh, of course I'm like... I mean, it's kind of obvious. And we got like... But this is my responsibility. There's a fishbowl. Love it. Oh, oh, 
Okay, so this right here, I totally missed it the first time until I went on Twitter and someone <clears throat> took a screenshot of this. Peter Parker is wearing Tony Stark's glasses in this scene. He turns around, he sees something. Those are the glasses that he was wearing. It's. I'll put a picture right here. It's. I just love it, dude. I just love the fact that he's still connected. He's. He want. He he was his his idol, and he looks up to him. He wants to be like him. And the results of Endgame are going to continue on in this. Let's keep going. Star Wars. Like I'm putting my friends in danger. The world needs the next Iron Man. Are you going to step up or not? And that moment right there is the one that I can't I can't even handle right now. It the world needs a new Iron Man. It's him looking at this new tech. Happy's there. Uh, Nick Fury is asking him, "Are you going to step up?" It's just I don't know if that's if, the, if those lines are if that's part of the same conversation. But I just want it. it I want Sony to do this right. I want them to keep on this contract with with with. MC with uh with Marvel Studios and Disney because I want to see this Spider-Man become the next big thing. I want him to take over for for Iron Man. And I, if they're smart enough, they can do it. That's the thing. This is we're at the end of Endgame. We're done. Like Infinity Saga is done. What started this entire Infinity Saga? Iron Man. And the last movie was Endgame. We're starting a whole new thing now. Like, we need to understand that we're starting a whole new thing. And what is the first thing that we're starting off with? Spider-Man Far From Home. And the question is being posed. Someone need, they need a new Iron Man. And I, I just hope that the goal and the, the, the future that they have in store is that Tom Holland's Peter Parker takes over as the new Spider-Man. Because we need a character that we can feel connected to. Captain Marvel, I love Captain Marvel a lot. I love her character. I love the superhero. I love Brie Larson. But she is so powered that it's hard for us as the viewers to relate. And Peter Parker being the next thing to take over the mantle as Spider-Man, for him to be the center stage for it all, for us to see Peter Parker, to see Tom Holland grow, grow in the role of, of Spider-Man for years and years to come, for the next 11 years and carry on the franchise like Robert Downey Jr. did. That will be the, the greatest thing of all time. Because the acting, the 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 role that Tom Holland plays as Peter Parker in so far, Far From Home, Civil War, Infinity War, and then the la the, the small bit that we know of, Endgame, and now this, it's so good. And I just want to see him continue this role. And it scares me because I don't want to see Sony just take it back because they just think they can just handle everything. I don't want them to do that because there's so much, there's, it's so precious what they have right here. And I want them to continue this because this is so, so good. I, I just want them, I, I can't say it enough. I want them, I want this to be the new Iron Man. I want Peter Parker to be the new Iron Man and just build up. And then by the time we have 11 years from now and another 22 films from now and Tom Holland at this point is going to be in his 30s. I want to see a mature Spider-Man, one that is willing to sacrifice his life the same way that he saw his mentor, Iron Man, do it. That's enough. I'm ranting, but I I, I can't say it enough. I, I need this to be the thing. I'm just so, ho I, I'm stoked for this. The new suit, I love it. And here we go, we got the theme playing right now. And we see Happy right here, just, you know, interacting with his friends. The greatest thing ever. Okay, and that's it. That's the end of the trailer. I, I'm so, I can't, I'm so excited for this film. I, I thought that after seeing the end of Endgame and it being like, it was an emotional film for me because it was, I followed this whole thing from beginning to end. And to have a definitive end with a little bit of open openness at the end so it can like, you know, blossom to whatever is next in, in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I thought I was going to be done. I thought I was going to need a break. And seeing this, I, I it just literally reinvigorated that that hype that I had for the franchise again. And, and I know some people are dealing with the fact of superhero fatigue. I get that. That's totally understandable. 
this film, dude, is just like, I'm so excited for this. Been a big fan of Spider Man for the longest time. Uh, I know that they nailed it. They hit the gold mine with Tom Holland. And my hope is that this just, this is the best thing. Like, this is the, I, I, this is Iron Man 1. You know? That's my hope. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Let's talk pop. The breakdown for the Spider Man Far From Home trailer. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. In the comments down below, I really, really want to know what are your guys' theories? What do you think is going to happen in this film? And what do you think is the future for the Marvel Cinematic Universe from here on out forward? And until next time, I haven't come up with that for a friend. What do I say? Like, keep, keep popping, boys.